Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about SurfLog. SurfLog is a really great tool uh, to manage and monitor and keep track of uh, web usage across uh, uh, users and clients. Uh, it's a great reporting tool to kind of get statistical information on how the web is being used and by what type of browsers. Uh, as well as it's great for some forensics uh, if you end up having problems with clients or where clients are requesting uh, information on the browsing patterns of any of their users. Uh, you can give them forensic reports to help them uh, with, uh, with HR needs. Uh, all right, so to get started, uh, SurfLog is available as a premium plugin at Plugins for Lab Tech. So you see over on our console here, we have that up and available. Uh, if you come down here and click on the button, you can get to our website here. Uh, and here up the top, it says Downloads. Uh, we give you a 45-day free trial currently. I don't know how long that's going to last, but currently that's where it's at. Download the plugin. Uh, we're going to go ahead and save it to our desktop. Yep, save that. Excellent. Uh, let's go ahead and open it, and we're going to extract the DLL out here. There we go. Perfect. So now we have our SurfLog DLL file. Um, let's go back here and select uh, this DLL file and select the properties on it. You'll notice here I'm on a Windows 10 box, so I have an uncheck checkbox but you might actually have a uncheck button either way make sure you select that prior to installing the DLL and applying to unlock it then we can go in and go to help plugin manager advanced manage plugins add plugins find our surf log plugin that we just updated and open it you get this little window here, go ahead and hit save and close. And that brings our SurfLog plugin into the LabTech system. Click on that plugin, enable the plugin, turns it green. We're almost done. Before we can finish using this plugin, we need to first off restart the database agent, which we're going to do that right here by hitting reload DB agent plugins. Go ahead and select yes. And down here you'll see it's starting to do that. And then afterwards, we're going to close out this window and our lab tech console and then reopen our console, which will complete the plugin install. Okay, our database is now completed successfully. Agent's been restarted. Let's close our windows. Go ahead and reopen our window here. And if everything went well, we should now have a new SurfLog enable here in the view menu. SurfLog has to be enabled globally. This is like the global on-off hot switch to turn the system on and off. You also have to set a maintenance cycle. So how often do you want SurfLog to run? SurfLog normally, typically depending on who you are and how many people you're running against, four to eight hours uh, on average is probably the most standard. Uh, I typically, to get started, set it to one so I can, I can get some cycles in there first uh, to get it going, uh, and then come back and adjust this down to about four to eight uh, afterwards. Uh, oh yeah, license has expired, so we need to go update our license, so give me one second while I fix that. Okay, let's see if that fixed us. Let's go back here, re-enable ourselves. Okay, we got our interval, and we are now able to turn ourselves on. So we are in good shape, licensed up, ready to go. We are licensed by our LT server name, so if your server name is inaccurate, licensing won't match up. So make sure that we get your server name accurate. If you do have a problem, contact us. We'll be more than happy to get that updated for you. Now we're on as a master system, but we're still not actually scanning anybody. We're just on as a master system saying that we are allowing 
scans to take place if you so for so actually go and set them at the client level. So we'll close this out. We'll come in here and then we've got our client. We'll click our client here. You'll notice now that we have a surf log button in our client level. Click on that. We need to configure. Turn the client on for scanning. So you have to individually turn clients on for scanning. Each client uh, you can turn on or off based, based on the needs of the client. Turn the client on. Set a retention policy. You need to set a retention policy. I would suggest on average 7 to 15 days for most people. 30 days if you're only doing small groups of machines. Uh, if a client has four or five hundred PCs and you're doing a 90-day retention on all browsing history for those 500 PCs, you're going to come in here and this thing is going to load terribly. It's going to be very slow trying to load a lot of that data. Uh, we do have paging in here so you can page through the data, but it will be a significant amount and, and, uh, and will probably cause some, some level of load could be a significant amount of entries in the database for that client. Um, so you might have some Ill, Ill, Ill effect if you're trying to run this on a good chunk of machines, you know, thousands of machines at once uh, and, and holding that level of retention. So doing really big amounts of machines, seven days, you know, 1,500, 2,000 machines or less, 15 days. Um, if you're 100 machines, 30 days, not so bad. You know, if, you're, if you are you know, 200, 300 machines, maybe 30 days. Uh, 100 machines, 90 days. Uh, you, you, know, you, you do the math on the number of clicks a person can do in a given afternoon times the number of machines you're collecting uh, over a period of hours each day. Uh, that data could get very significant uh, if you try to hold on to too much of it for too long. So just keep that in mind. So anyhow, we'll set it for 15 days. Now the surf, surf log keywords list is a list that you'll do comma separated of keywords you want to see highlighted in the logs. So if you want to look for Facebook uh, or porn or used autos or I like chocolate, then you can come in here and, and put in keywords that you're looking for. Um, that will apply to this client that will then highlight those in the logs as you go through the logs, scrolling through the logs, will stand those logs out so that you can see them more appropriately uh, and, uh, uh, <clears throat> and use those as needed. So we're not going to put any of those down right now, but let's go ahead and save that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got to save. Excellent. <clears throat> now, keep in mind, Laptop, our surf log is on a cycle. That cycle is automated and it's now going to run uh, every hour because that's what we have the main service set at. So what we're going to need to do now is wait while that cycle runs and what will happen is this client will be included and it will go out and scan all the machines under, under this client that it can pull data into and will populate this information. So, knowing that we need about an hour, we're going to go ahead and pause and do our little time warp thing here uh, and wait for this guy to run its course once here and, and feed us some data. Okay, and we're back from our time warp. It's been about an hour now. Let's check a look and see what our surf log has to say. Click on our tab here, and there we go. We're starting to get some data back. Uh, looks like we've got a couple machines, we are a couple users out there that were responding to some browser information going on. And you can see here we have some data. We now have data in our history. We can now browse and see by browser type and by URL, site title, uh, user profile, uh, number of visits, last visit date. Uh, and we come in here and page through records. We look like we only got 300 records so far. That's good. Uh, we can export this. So we come out here and export this to CSV. Say yes, yeah, sure not. Why not? Open it up and it'll pop open here. And you'll see here, this is how we export our stuff. Titles. 
we gotta get that stuff out there. Visit accounts. And again, so you can now get, see it spread out kind of what it looks like uh, relative to the data that we're exporting. We are getting data on a per user, so you can see which user profile is executing that particular request. We can also now go down to the computer level. At the computer level, we should start getting data here as well. Excellent. There you go. You can see data here as well, generating browser history, timelines, and so forth. Keep in mind that also uh, <clears throat> uh, browser history is picked up in 24-hour blocks uh, to keep the amount of data flowing back to LabTech easy enough for LabTech to crunch. So that what that means is that uh, the probe, if it runs, if you got your scanner running every couple hours to to um, to go out and collect records, it's going out and collecting the last 24 hours based upon that time frame. So you're really actually maybe adding to the to the database the four hour block, but it's grabbing the last 24. Uh, initially on data, you'll notice here that our history, our timestamps are only going to be go back as far as 24 hours ago. So 3.31 at 3 o'clock in the afternoon to 4.01, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That was our first scan. Now, uh, each additional scan will add more records to this as the day goes by. So up until a point that you reach your the, the, the uh, retention policy that you set for your clients, so 5, 7 day, 15 day, 30 day, 90 day, so forth. Uh, so you'll see those listed here, and you'll be able to page through all those records as, as you need to. Um, uh, each client, you clear out logs, export at the client level as well. This will, this will tally based on each user. So if you execute SurfLog on a terminal server, you'll get every terminal server client account that's, that's on that terminal server that's using browser. You'll see each of their access is here listed here so it becomes a really great tool for managing the stats and seeing the usage that you have taking place uh, on your on your networks uh, and the flow of time frames that uh, that traffic is going out that is surflog uh, if you have any questions feel free to reach out to us support dot uh, plug plugins for uh, labtech.com uh, and we'll uh, we'll see what we can do to help you Thank you very much and enjoy.